Good morning, Facebook and YouTube. It is time for Leadership Live Friday once again here, coming to you live from the Hudson Valley in New York. I'm Merritt Minnemeyer. I'm the founder and creator of Master One Coaching. And this morning, my special guest is founder and owner of Vegan Wines, Francis Gonzalez. Good morning, Francis. Good morning, Merritt. How are you? How's everyone? I'm, I'm great. And I, oh, it just occurred to me. We talked about you, you're in California this morning. It's seven o'clock where you are. So it is quite early in the morning. <laughs> oh, so, it is. Thank you so much for coming on so early. I appreciate it. <laughs> you're welcome. I put the alarm on for six o'clock, uh, but I forgot that my, my phone is on New York time. So I woke up at three in the morning. Oh, ready. no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Well, I preach this good. What dedication. My goodness. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> and thank you for having me. So I would love to jump right in. And you know, I always begin these conversations with asking our guests, um, tell us a little bit about your story and how you got to be where you are. Oh, okay. Um, well, um, I became a vegan over 25 years ago. Uh, and um, during one of my trips to France, a uh, someone during a wine tasting tour, someone said the word egg white. And I remember Eric, uh, my partner, he wasn't a vegan yet. So he's like taking the wine glass out of my hand. He's like, I guess no more wine for you. <laughs> so I was like, uh, I'm going to find out about this because that's all I, I drink. But just the fact of not not knowing, thinking it's just grapes, you know? So I, after the, the, the tour, I asked so many questions and I was, it just, it, it just lit up another part of me like, wow, um, how much more things are in there. So my birthday turned into a research trip and I was just, mm -hmm. you know, just fascinated at how many things go into a wine that we wasn't aware of. So anyway, fast forward, I'm back in the U S and, um, I type in the word vegan wines and it was in, on, in Google and it was still available. And I, I Googled veganwines.com and it was still available. So I just felt like that was a sign for me to go forward with it. I didn't go to wine school. I, I, I know about veganism from being a vegan for over 25 years and that is my life. So I just felt like if I didn't know as a vegan, imagine how many other people do not know as well. And mm -hmm. that's how, um, vegan wine started and it it opened up my life because um you know you're finding out what else is in things that we don't know about it and it mm -hmm. just it just changed my whole life style as well so I'm very grateful for vegan wines to do that it it took me to my next level <laughs> yeah well and so you really uh, combined your passions and your purpose into your business how long have you been doing this now uh, vegan was since I started in 2017, Okay, but everything became legal in 2018 with the liquor license and so forth. Okay. And what is the um, main uh, sort of business of vegan wines? What is it that the actual, the actual practice of the business? Well, vegan wines is uh, I'm okay. So I'm an importer and a distributor. So I import wines, but also I can, um, have an online uh, do direct to consumer. So I use all that to go and I must visit every vineyard of all the wines that we carry. And I use that to um, know, I feel like everyone should know where the product, any product comes from, you know? So, so I use that platform to, uh, I curated a hundred, 100% plant-based uh, portfolio. So what I want to do is whenever you open up that wine portfolio, you find a wine that you want and it just happens to be vegan as it should. <laughs> uh, we do. <laughs> so um, that's what we're working on right now. So um, and also to make it accessible, transparency, you know, once you're aware of what is in or not in your uh, wine, then it's your choice, you know, if you want to buy it or not. But I, I, it, there's nothing out there that really gives you that um, one-stop place of being able to, 
to um I really wish one day well I'm working on one day to have ingredients on our our wine um, labels just to be as transparent as possible Mm -hmm. so I guess that's the whole thing transparency and and awareness Um, yeah I know you and I talked before too about about the things that go on like in soil right or in um, which I think is fascinating like I would never have considered that uh, before but like this you know I mean the the different practices that, that farmers have and you know for tradition or for whatever they've learned or for convenience or cost or whatever it is, right. That, that people do what they do for. And, and we just don't even think about it. Cause you think, like you said, you think grapes. <laughs> so Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That part really, really fascinated, you know, me learning. And I remember when we were in Bordeaux, um, there's just one gentleman and he's the vineyard master and also the winemaker And when he purchased his vineyard, it was dead soil. Like there was so many chemicals in it that he had to let it be for five years. And the fact that he is not vegan and he's doing it, you know, he's doing it with these methods and teaching me what's in there. I just knew then and there that this is something way more than wines. This is about environment, you know, Mm -hmm. our, our, our earth. So, um, there's biodynamic is a, is a practice. Um, it's, they put animal manure into a cow horn and then they, they dig a hole and they put it there and it's part of a, their method. So mm-hmm. it, it's not needed. And I, I'm not saying this from, because I'm saying, it, I'm saying this because I've been researching it with other vineyard masters and farmers it's not needed and it's actually you know with where we are now it's doing more harm than good because we don't know what's in those animal manures with you know the antibiotics and hormones that are put into it and it goes into our food whether it's grapes all the produce you know it Mm -hmm. goes it's everything um so also like uh, other chemicals that go into the soil, you know, some people even still use Roundup, which is kind of, you know, sad with what we know about Roundup. I so saw we, it in the story the day. I was shocked. I was like, really? Are they still selling this? <laughs> I know, right? It's like in small doses or revamped. I'm like, oh my gosh. But we want to just, we want to work with farmers that are, um, just going working along nature with nature instead of against because we need that right now people don't realize that the wine industry is 418 billion dollar industry so imagine how much vineyard is being used so imagine how much that makes a part of our environment art that's going on with everything going on right now um and also you get a better harvest if you start taking care of the soil from the beginning you're going to get a better harvest I mean, we don't know what the weather's going to be like because uh, Mm -hmm. we just came from like uh, Tennessee and Arkansas and they lost all their harvest um, two years ago because of the frost, you know, Mm -hmm. the big frost. So you don't, we don't know about that, but at least you're giving nature an extra push, like, come on, you know, let's do this, you know? Um, (laughs) (laughs) And I love what they're they're doing you know they're so they're so into it and uh and then they don't have to do so much in the wine cellar because the great you know a lot of things that are being put into the wine and the winemaking is because there wasn't a good harvest you know the coloring Mm -hmm. could be off and they'll add coloring to it um sometimes they use sugar from costco (laughs) and you know so it's it's a lot of things that could go into it and we just we my motto is less is more Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I, gosh, I mean, it's it's fascinating that all of you that you've presented here, and again, I, I mean, I've, I I grew up, you know, near wine country, well, actually in wine country, in south of where you are now, but um, there's still a lot of vineyards, you know, in the Carmel Valley and that area, and uh, so it was around me a lot, and I never even considered like the additives and things that were put in. Um, Lucia, who joins us often on these uh, Friday lives and has been here before with her sister, has a so she says, good morning. And she says that she can't believe that ingredients that go into the, the bottle are not required to be listed on the wine bottle. I know it's crazy. Like we require it other places. I wonder why we don't yet, but that is one of your parts of your mission. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 
because wine is food, you know, grapes is food. So why cannot, why are we legally not required to put that on our, um, as an ingredients for everyone to see what's in the wine? Sometimes yeah. I go into the, to the wineries and the people that work there don't even know what's in the wines. And that's the scary part. <laughs> <laughs> and I was curious about too, because I haven't had this, heard this part of your story. So whatever you, part of it you want to tell, but I'm curious about um, like what you were doing before you were doing this business and what, and you said what inspired you to go into business for yourself, but have you always been um, an entrepreneur or is this something that was new for you because you were driven by this particular cause or what was that? Like, tell me a little bit about that part of your life. Yeah. Um, so I'm a mother to four. I have twins. They're 32. Uh, so I became a mother at a young age and mm -hmm. I had, and my first pregnancy was twins. So the, going, oh, I had to drop out of, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to drop out of high school, mm. and I couldn't get a nine to five. So yeah. my only con and and to be honest, you know, I went on welfare, mm -hmm. and I remember walking into the office, and then and the lady just treating me like I was like trash. Honestly, so I was like, I, I remember going back home and telling my mother, I can't do this, you know. So I became an entrepreneur um, then, and I just did it by helping people put together events, birthday parties, something, something small, but anything to keep me home mm -hmm. and be able to take care of my kids and still get money. And I, I was still very lucky that my parents paid the rent. So, but I just had to have enough, you know, for myself and my, my, my twins. And then from there, it just went on that entrepreneur was, that was my ticket <laughs> that I, I was good at it. And, um, and I loved it, you know? Yeah. Well, that's, thank you for sharing that um, part of your story. It's such a powerful testament to, to this, um, the entrepreneurial opportunities. Yeah. And I think that so many times for whatever reason, I mean, this and myself included, by the way, which is odd because I was raised by entrepreneurs. So I'm not even sure where I got this idea, but, <laughs> but there's a, there's some sort of limiting belief that, that some of us adopt that it's like, well, I could only get a job and I need to go out there and like make money and work for somebody else. And once we understand the the opportunity of going into business for ourselves, yes, there's some, certainly some challenges and, and some responsibilities we have, but also the freedom that we have and the opportunity to make more money on our own schedule, on our own time, by our own priorities. And so I appreciate you sharing that because it's, um, gosh, in being a teenager with twins, I mean, I had twins in my early thirties and <laughs> it's it's a lot it's a lot and, I, and they are wonderful and it is a lot it's just a lot of, it's a lot of time and attention and right energy so yes that's, yes that's inspiring in and of itself okay well let's talk a little bit more about um what like when you hit those hurdles when you hit like something isn't going right or you haven't you know you can't make a deal go the way you want it to or you come up against some sort of challenge what is it that gets you through to the next step how do you stay motivated? I started it. So, you know, like when you begin something, you're already there. And I, I always, you know, I see, I really feel it's because I became a mother at such a young age mm -hmm. because my life was no longer about me. My life was for them, you know, so any, anything that I decided on or anything that I went forward on, if I go backwards, it's not just me, it's them. So, um, I always had that in the back of my mind, but, but also once I start something, I just, I just feel like if I thought it and I feel about this for everyone, if you think it and you feel it, then it's supposed to happen. It's, de it's destined to happen. You just got to keep going. So I just tell myself that, <laughs> and you know, it's hard sometimes, but I just like, whether it's just eat the favorite brownie or have a glass of wine, I'm just like, okay, tomorrow we're going to keep going. And that's how I do it, you know. And is that something you were taught or did you just discover that as part of intrinsically who you are? I discovered it myself because, yeah. you know, again, because of the twins, they taught mm -hmm. me a lot. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's, that's such a, such a cool, um, it's, it, it's talking about like, right energy and impulse and inspiration, like to be able to have that um, that wisdom at such a young age is, is really remarkable. And uh, I think I do see that happening more and more with, with the generations coming up too. Like they're, they're less and less interested in buying into the, 
the system, but that isn't really working for them anyway. They're more into like, okay, how can I do differently? Because clearly this is not working for everybody. So <laughs> you're seeing it much more clearly than certainly a lot of us you know, I, that I ever did anyway at that age. Um, awesome. Okay, great. So how did you get to be passion, passionate about veganism? And, and I know animal rights is a, is a part of what you really are um, driven yeah. to protect. What, what, what is that? How did that come about? Um, a friend of mine in my 20s, uh, early 20s, they they um, sat me down to watch a film, a uh, video, a documentary. <laughs> yeah. And this is way back. So it wasn't, it was like, it, it was showing me how people were treating animals in other parts of the world. Mm. And it wasn't for food. It was for their beliefs and traditions. Yeah. And so... I remember turning to them and I was like, wow, we're, I'm doing the same thing out of tradition. You know, I was taught to, you know, think of animals as our food. And it just changed the way I was, I was thinking about it. Cause I'm, I'm going to the video saying, oh my gosh, how can you do that? And I'm like, oh my gosh, Francis, how can you do that? So mm -hmm. that's how it all started. So I became vegan first for the animal rights. Um, I um, didn't know how to eat vegan, but I just, you know, being Puerto Rican with a lot of, of hearty foods and a lot of meat in it, mm -hmm. I started um, just saying to myself, I'm going to eat whatever, um, like, let's say Mediterranean food, they have hummus or Chinese food, they have fried rice and vegetables. So I just started doing that and, and it opened my palate to other foods, you know, mm -hmm. as well. Um, but the more that I, I learned about animals, the more I felt like we need to give them a voice. So it just literally became my life. And my parents did not understand it. Um, my mother to this day, she asks me if I want cream in my coffee and it's not non-dairy cream. So, so it, <laughs> it's- We all have right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, But, um, you know, it's, it's just, and also all the animal sanctuaries and and um it we have such a powerful little group now of, of awareness and learning you know and we still learn every day um like i fi found out just three days ago that donkeys are going extinct because of humans you know so it's just trying it's my passion i feel like my life is to be their voice mm. That's really inspiring. I think that, um, and that's what, what you said too, but like, I didn't know how to eat vegan. I think that, um, you know, and everybody has their own choices and I'm certainly, you know, not, I'm, I, my, my personal choice now is also, um, to be vegan. And that's been a process over many years. Um, uh, and I'm, there's no, like, I'm not going to get into the politics of that or anything here, but, um, yeah. but suffice it to say that I do also understand like when I was a kid, right. And I wanted to be a vegetarian and I didn't do it well. And I got very sick. I got, you know, malnourished and I woke up one morning and passed out. And like, and yeah. it's because I was eating steamed rice and vegetables with like no protein. Like I had no like substance. So it really is. It's not just something you can just like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna eat potato chips and be fine. Like it really has to be thoughtful, right? There is a, a practice. Um, and, and I mean, it doesn't have to be extensive research, but it's enough to know that you need to have a balanced diet with, um, with, you know, the where protein can, and actually protein can come from lots of different places that you wouldn't necessarily expect. And so it doesn't mean that you're also relegated to eat, you know, salad for the rest of your life either. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's much more than salad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. Awesome. Well, if you could, um, I mean, there's so much wisdom that you've brought here today, just through your story, but if, if you could kind of wrap it up and say, you know, one takeaway that you'd like to give today to the audience who's watching either live or on the replay. Um, what would that be? What would you want to tell people? Um, just keep going forward, especially today more than ever. Um, whatever your passion is, just, just do it. I know it's hard when you first think about it, uh, but if you thought about it, once again, if you think about it, it's meant to be. And, you know, always know that all, that teamwork is very important as well. So if yeah. someone's there to give you advice, you know, or help you out in any way, please take it. Because, you know, um, 
there's nothing to be shy about or feel like, oh my gosh, I'm not doing it good because I need help. No, we all need help. And that's something that I'm always like, I am like, yes, come, please help me, you know, because, and I love to give help as well. And so there's just a circle of giving and taking to make this world a better place. So just go forward. That's such an important thing too for entrepreneurs because we're so not good at that, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, because we want, because we're like, oh, well, I'm gonna go out and do my thing, right? Like, and then we get into the. I see this all the time with clients. Like, we, we want to go out and do something great in the world. We want to go, you know, whether it's you know, bring a product or a service or the widget, whatever it is. And then we think, well, I'm the only one who can really see the vision. I'm the one that blazing it the most, and so therefore, I'm the only one that can do it, right? Um, and it's it is, it's really, uh, it's the logic to our detriment because we can only do so much. And especially those of us who have come from a different, like you set out very early to do this on your own. So you just kind of built habits early, which it was awesome. Some, sometimes other people are coming from nine to five job, whatever, nine to five jobs, you know, jobs that, yeah. that we go to that we get paid for um, and transition, make that transition. And it's like, uh, it's, it feels very lonely and very scary to trust somebody else with that. Yeah. So to understand that there's so much more opportunity, not just when you hire a team, even a small team, but when you collaborate with other business owners and that's what you do all the time, right? You are in partnership with businesses all over the world. Yes. For, for the I love of you. Yeah. That's incredible. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. It's, um, I love like even what Lucia is doing, you know, that she gets all these businesses together. Mm -hmm. That's why I love living where I'm at, you know, because everyone is, is looking out for each other, you mm -hmm. know, and, and that's a neighborhood. Now that's what you call a neighborhood. Now we can all do that around the world. Imagine how much change we can make. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty, it, it, we live in a pretty special place. It's true. I mean, and I do have, mm -hmm. most of the people I have on Leadership Live are from the Hudson Valley area. And so, um, because that's, that's my neighborhood, right? Um, mm -hmm. But we do have a very special thing going on here. And there's a lot of uh, socially conscious entrepreneurial efforts happening right here in the Hudson Valley. So it's, it's pretty, um, it's a pretty awesome time to live here. So tell me about, you're in California now and you've been in you said Tennessee and Arkansas. Is that where you were before? Uh, we've been, yes, we have been to Tennessee mm -hmm. and Arkansas, um, Arizona, Utah, North and South Carolina. And you're, and oh, and, and tell me about your rig real quick. So this is really cool too. What, what are you traveling around in? <laughs> <laughs> so we have a new cam 320. It's, it's small. Um, this is part of our, this is our dresser. <laughs> so behind us, and then we have our, our sofa that turns into a bed. We do have a bathroom and a kitchen here, so I keep the, I can cook. But it's uh, 2,000 pounds, and it's being towed by our Tesla. So we have to stop every 150 to 180 um, miles. It depends on the wind, because the wind also has to do a lot with how much energy we pull, as much as the hills of going up. Oh so it's been, <laughs> it's been an adventure. <laughs> Eric had to leave me the other day at a spot on the side of the, not on, on an exit with the camper by itself to go charge because the camper wouldn't have made it another oh, no. three miles. <laughs> so I'm here cooking on the side of the road. Like, okay, I'll have <laughs> early dinner ready by the time he gets back. <laughs> so it's been adventurous. And is it just the two of you together? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Eric's your partner, and he's your partner in the business as well. I know he does his own thing too, right? Yeah, he's yeah. a he's his own thing. He's yeah. my life partner, and he's we're just doing this together. He's actually doesn't even really drink, so when I take him along, he drinks the wines and he likes it. I love it because that means the wine is friendly too in taste. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, gosh, I imagine you've gotten an incredible education about all kinds of things um, as you started this business. Including <laughs> electric vehicles and camp and traveling across the country. Um, so let's tell <laughs> so let's tell everybody about um, how they can get a hold of you. How they can learn more about vegan wines. I know you have an event coming up if they're local in this area. If you want to talk a little bit about that, um, and 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 oh, how they can follow you in your adventures because I know you had some beautiful photos 
of the, your friends you've met along the way too. Yeah, thank you. So um, all our social media platforms is at My Vegan Wines. And uh, at My Vegan Wines, yeah. I'm going to put that yeah. in the chat. Okay. Oh, okay. Bing. <laughs> and our website is veganwines.com. And my name is Francis with the E. And they could always contact me with Francis at veganwines.com. <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. And, All right. Oh, good. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. It's just that, um, you know, one thing talking about neighbors and us working together with Amy, you know, she's a chef. And she came to me and said, hey, we're doing this event. Would you like to be part of it? It's uh, the fall harvest dinner at a bed and breakfast water, um, uh, water, watercress grill, uh, the hill. Sorry. <laughs> it's still seven o'clock. Seven thirty. Okay. <laughs> well, you're doing great. Right. I um, haven't had coffee yet. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, uh, I'm very happy about it because, you know, it's, it's there it's going to be vegan friendly you know I'm going to be dining there as well as our wines being there so I'll be I'll be there in time to be part of it and I love it because now we're having more um events that you know anyone could join us you know so and we'll have our wines there so I get to talk a little bit about it to just you know have people what best way to learn about beautiful wines while you're eating amazing delicious food it's a great combo (laughs) and a great beautiful area too yeah and you yeah. mentioned Amy, Amy Tung, who was on the show a few weeks ago and uh, who owns Valley Home mm-hmm. Dining. So you can go back and check out that conversation as well. All righty, my friend. Well, I'm going to let you get to your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank, you so, um, thank you. you so much for having me here. It's wonderful to see you. <laughs> you too. You too. I really appreciate it. And um, I will connect with you when you get back, but have a safe venture back home. And I, I wish you... <laughs> smooth travels with lots of charging places thank you <laughs> if you want to follow francis on her adventures go and check her out at, at uh, my vegan wines either instagram facebook um she's got some really great photos of the animals she's been along the way and her adventures so all right thank you so much francis we'll see you soon all right thank you bye <laughs> Thank you so much for being here again on Leadership Live Friday. We're here just about every Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time on Facebook and YouTube. And for more information about how you can live into your next level leadership, please visit us at masterofonecoaching.com. I have a brand new program starting October 14th for those entrepreneurs who are ready to level up in their business and their soul purpose business. Uh, We only have a few spots left and it's going to be an amazing six month program. So come join us for that. You want to come talk to me about it and uh, drop me a DM. I'm um, having conversations, application conversations with people. And so I'll send those up. I'll drop my link in the comments here too. Have a great Friday and rest of your weekend. Thank you so much for joining us here today and we'll see you next week.